Hello and welcome to another episode of the PD Performance Podcast. A solo episode for you guys today. And I would imagine it's going to be a well-listened to one. Or not an explosive one, but in that kind of realm. So what I'm going to talk about today, and you probably guess from the title of this podcast, is why I turned down an inter-county role this week. And it was a difficult decision to make, as you can imagine. And over the last few years, it's probably something that I had aspirations of holding in the future. However, the major reason that I turned down the role was that I felt it was the right role for me, but at the wrong time. So obviously, there's been a lot of growth over the last couple of years, both personally and from a business perspective and a practitioner perspective as well. So I've got better and better. I've learned as much as I possibly could. I've grown the business to a level that it's at now where it is a sustainable business that generates a decent living for me, I guess. But I was doing all of the team coaching and consulting as well with that. And I was coaching, I am coaching currently, it's coming to the end of the season. By the time this goes out, it will be the end of the season, but I've been coaching six nights a week or six days a week at least so five nights plus a weekend game if there's a game on and that was something that I kind of had to step back from this year was just doing six days a week every week of the year because as you know from the podcast episode last year I did experience symptoms of burnout and I think I've become better able to notice when stress is getting on top of me and when I'm close to experiencing the same symptoms again and you might be able to hear my voice I'm a little bit sick or I have been a little bit sick but I'm on the mend and there's been a great deal of stress over the last few weeks as there there will be for everybody I'm sure but being that it's championship season and then trying to make decisions around what my next move would be and the uncertainty of where I was going to be next year it probably has played a part on me working quite a lot and traveling quite a lot and maybe not looking after my health as well as I could so all of these factors culminated in look things are going well for the business lots of people are signing up at the moment like of this recording I've only two spaces left in October but I would imagine they're going to be gone by the time this goes out because we will be in October which is fantastic and I've been implementing all of the things that I've learned from Alan Murdoch from Sam Portland from David Gray over the last few years great effect and having success with athletes but at the same time with all of this growth and success over the last few years I've probably neglected other aspects of my life and there is an opportunity cost to everything so me coaching as much as I was was great for my coaching ability and for the business and that regard or that aspect of my life but it probably wasn't the best thing for my personal life in that I spent less time with friends less time with family for sure and less time for myself so I stopped playing sport altogether and I know I mentioned that I had aspirations of going back playing sport competitive sport next year and that was not going to be possible if I stayed coaching the amount that I was coaching currently so look this inter-county role cropped up I'm not in a position to disclose who it was with but the team was well suited to my skill set they wanted to have a focus on game speed developing game speed playing a transition based game where they carry the ball quite a lot and there's a high demand on 
their aerobic system to recover in between bouts of high intensity actions or high intensity sprints so repeat speed so i was definitely confident that i would be able to develop and provide value to that group and as well as that the culture at the moment was not at the level of an elite standard so it would have been extremely easy to go in and make huge culture change very very quickly however i would have had to start asap essentially so i would have been coming to the end of the club season and going straight in with an inter-county team and i am feeling a little bit exhausted to be honest <laughs> and it probably is the time that i took some sort of a break so look i i debated it and i said look maybe if I push it out a month, I, I will be more aligned or more um, on the side of giving it a go because it is definitely something that I've aspired to do and something that interests me. And as I said, I would be a good fit for the role, I think. However, it's not really what I would be saying yes to. It's what I'd be saying no to. And over the last few years, or before I took the role with Thomas Davis GA Club and started to double down on the business here in Ireland, I had aspirations or a goal of moving to Australia. And when things started to take off here, I decided to stay here. And then it came to the end of year last year and I was kind of on the verge of going again. And I said I would stay if I got offered a certain role. And I did get offered that role. So then I chose to stay. And then this time around, all year, I was kind of saying, look, I think I'm going to go unless I get offered an inter-county role. And then I got offered an inter-county role. But from having conversations with more experienced coaches... Working with an inter-county team or in an inter-county setup is something that will probably be there for me in the future. However, applying for a working holiday visa or going traveling in Australia is probably something that has a bit of a finite timeline for me. And given that you must be under the age of 30 to apply for that visa and given that I am 28, turning 29 in January for those of you wondering what age I am it probably needed to be now or never so I chose for once to make a decision based on me and not based on the business and based on career goals and given that I'm single have no kids like that's what the senior coaches were saying to me was like, look, that's not going to be the case all the time. So this opportunity or the opportunity to go to Australia isn't always going to be there. And if you don't go now, then are you going to be able to live with the regret of not going ever for the rest of your life? Whereas realistically, if you pass up this inter-county role, look, you might regret it, but there's probably going to be potential that you will get offered one of those roles in the future. I am interrupting the podcast to let you guys know that I have 10 spaces available for online coaching in November. I've limited spaces available because October has been such a successful month for me. However, given that now I'm on the road and I'm focusing primarily on the individualized coaching, I'm going to open up 10 more spaces in November if athletes want to take them to elevate their performance to new levels that they haven't reached before. It's the off season, so it's time to get that extra work done if you want to be a better athlete next season. Message me on Instagram with the DM titled Premium if you want to take one of those spaces. And don't wait around because October has been a great month for me, which means that the service is obviously providing tremendous value. So if you want to take one of those spaces, DM me immediately. And now back to the podcast so that's why i made the decision that i made and it 
probably isn't going to come to a sh- as a shock to to many people i suppose that um if i'm going to be going there i'm going to be uh ceasing working with the teams that i'm working with now and at the moment of recording i've only told the head coach of one of those teams that i won't be there next year out of respect um because he is the person that brought me into that team and into that club and into that culture so I wanted to I wanted him to be the first person that I told and look he was disappointed but he understood completely where it's coming from and by the time this goes out I will have told all of the players and all of the coaches and they'll all be aware some of them probably have an inkling already but um, I don't want to let them know this early I don't want to make it about me I want them to focus on what they can focus on and focus on their performance in their games which is obviously the primary focus at the moment keeping the main thing the main thing because that's the reason I coach is for them to achieve their highest level of performance so I don't want any distractions at all I want it to keep athlete centered and athlete focused and team focused and team centered and I'm I'm sad to go to be honest I wish I could stay with those groups and coaching those teams forever but like realistically in the cycle of coaching in the cycle of a team it ends eventually as well and sometimes a fresh voice is needed and sometimes a change is needed for the coach as well and I think potentially a change is needed for me and as a result of that look I've other opportunities on the horizon with some exciting opportunities with other coaches in the industry or other people in the industry that are going to be starting and coming out soon and I just want to go and give it a bash and try and uh have some time with my friends who for the most part live in Australia at the moment so I have a community down there and yeah it excites me the idea of going down there so it's just a decision that I've made and it might be quite definitive and some people might see it as a big decision and it is a big decision I guess but making a wrong decision is usually not as bad as indecision so I've made a decision based on my gut and I'm gonna go with it so the plan is to go down to Australia and do a bit of a podcast tour with the PD performance podcast so we'll still be providing content for you guys hopefully top quality content and I'm going to continue doing my individualized work with athletes and keep the business going in an online space and maybe in an in-person space down there too and I'm not ruling out that I'm going to come back (laughs) to be honest I have an idea in the back of my head that I will be coming back Um, I don't know when but I know I'll be back in Ireland in the near future and I, I feel that with my work with teams I'm making huge change for sure but I can definitely make more significant change on an individual level well not definitely but I feel like at times I have more control over the individual athlete and I can make more significant change with the individual athlete because they're bought into your process and you have control over their performance to an extent if it is a return to play program if it's a performance based program sure there will be stages of their cycle or of their season when the manager might do some crazy conditioning that does have a bit of a negative transfer or a negative impact on what we're trying to do but you're trusting that the athlete has the foresight and the confidence to say look I'm not going to do this I'm going to sit it out and that's not at the luxury of every athlete however when an athlete is injured and rehabbing and returning to play often the coaches will do whatever it takes to get that athlete onto the field and as a result of that a lot of the time 
they will leave that athlete to get through whatever they need to get through before they play. So there's a little bit more trust in that process. And as a result of that, I find it a little bit easier to control, even though it's a ha- even though that it's a more complex process than just training for performance as a whole, if that makes sense. So look, I'm going to continue doing that stuff. I'm going to continue doing that stuff while I'm out traveling. And it actually is probably coming off the back of being pushed by some of my players because they know how hard I work and how much I do. And they know that I often don't tend to uh, take time off or go enjoy myself very often. So the player that I'm speaking about will probably know who she is, but she said to me a couple of, uh, or a month or a couple of weeks ago, as she has a list of uh, restaurants for me to try, and she she said, have you tried any of them? And I said, no, I haven't, haven't had the time of late. And she just said, you have to live your life. And it kind of hit me a little bit as well in that I am enjoying what I'm doing in coaching and whatnot, but I'm, I am definitely not living my life for myself. I'm living it for other people a lot of the time and always focused on what they want and not what I want. And look, something significant has happened in the last um, in the last month in regards to family that kind of just gave me the push that I do have to go and live my life and try new things and not always make decisions with other people consistently in mind. Uh, so for that reason (laughs) which is probably more important than sport and probably um, is a good follow on from my solo episode my last one in regards to sport being unfair at times and other things being more important than sport that is the reason that I said no to a great opportunity to work with an inter-county team so I'm going to make a decision for me for once and not for my career and for how I'll be perceived in the industry or where I'm going to go and I'm going to give it a bash and do a bit of travel I think for a while while still doing my best in everything that I do so yeah I hope that people can understand that and some people will think that I'm batshit crazy for saying no to that but It's like the decision to say no to it isn't for them. It's for me. So that is it for today, guys. I know it's more of a kind of chat about me than about anybody else, but maybe that will give somebody else the impetus or the push that they need to make a decision for themselves in their own life as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please remember to like it, share it and send us.